The following is not financial advice and is purely intended for entertainment purposes only. Okay, I think it's time. Let's talk super cycle. All disruptive technologies follow a predictable pattern known as the technology adoption life cycle, also called the S-curve. This is the common pattern that takes adoption from 0% to close to 100%. It typically takes 15 to 20 years for a new technology to build enough momentum to reach mass adoption. According to Jeffrey Moore's framework, innovators make up 2.5% of the population. After this comes the early adopters accounting for 13.5%. Beyond that, adoption enters the mid-majority phase, expanding out to 60% of the population. Following this, you finally have the laggards. Of course, there will always be a small percentage who never adopt, much like how there are still people today who don't own a television, but they represent a tiny minority. Bitcoin is following this same adoption curve. As of 2025, only 3% of the world owns any Bitcoin at all. Over time, Bitcoin is expected to reach mainstream adoption just like the internet, social media, or mobile phones. Eventually, Bitcoin will become invisible to the user, seamlessly integrated into apps, much like how no one really thinks about TCP IP protocols today. Within the next two to five years, checking accounts may hold stable coins and saving accounts may hold Bitcoin. Bitcoin's supply schedule is fixed and predictable. Every halving cycle reduces new supply by 50%. In the first cycle from 2009 to 2012, 7,200 new Bitcoins were mined daily. After the first halving, this dropped to 3,600 per day. The second halving brought it down to 1,800 per day. And four years later, after the third halving, it dropped again to 900 per day. In the current fifth cycle, we're down to 450 Bitcoins per day. That's a huge reduction from the original 7,200 per day. To put it into perspective, Michael Saylor alone buys more than 450 Bitcoin per day through MicroStrategy, and he's certainly not the only buyer. Bitcoin treasury companies, sovereign nations, institutions, and ETFs are all actively accumulating. For example, MicroStrategy just took five years to acquire 600,000 Bitcoin, while BlackRock's iBit ETF took just one year to accumulate over 700,000 Bitcoin. With this accelerating adoption, it's worth looking at how Bitcoin's scarcity compares to traditional assets like gold. One of the most referenced models is stock to flow, which shows how Bitcoin's supply dynamics make it increasingly scarce. We are now in the first cycle where Bitcoin's stock to flow ratio makes it scarcer than gold. Gold's inflation rate is around 1.5 to 2% per year. While 2% might not sound that bad, if you had 100% of all the gold in the world with a 2% inflation rate, after 36 years you would only own 50%, after 72 years you would own 25%, and after 108 years you would only own 12.5% of all the gold in the world. That is the power of 2% compound inflation. As the price of gold rises, more mining is incentivized, increasing supply, and slowly diluting the value of each ounce. But with Bitcoin, this is impossible. No matter how much capital is poured into mining, no matter how high the hash rate goes, newly mined Bitcoin cannot exceed the protocol's limit. In fact, the opposite happens. Bitcoin's inflation rate halves every four years. Here's how Bitcoin's annual inflation rate is projected. 2024, 0.8%. 2028, 0.4. 2032, 0.2. 2036, 0.1. Then 0 0.05, 0 0.025, and so on. By 2034, 99% of all Bitcoin will have been mined. The final 1 million Bitcoins will be mined over the next 110 years. Between 2100 and 2140, only 2 Bitcoins will be mined across those 40 years. Bitcoin's fair market value at each halving has risen dramatically over time. In the 2012 halving, it was $12. In 2016, it was $670. In 2020, it was $8,700. And in 2024, it was $64,000. You can see a clear pattern. Bitcoin's fair market value increases significantly each cycle. However, between these cycles, price volatility is extreme, though the volatility has decreased over time. Bitcoin's price history began with the Genesis block. A notable early transaction involved 5,050 Bitcoin sold via PayPal for just $5.02. That set Bitcoin's first unofficial price at one-tenth of a cent. From there, one-tenth of a cent to $30 in two years, a 3,000x increase, followed by a 95% crash back to $1. 
after the first halving a 100x increase, then an 85% pullback. After the second halving from $670 to $19,800, a 30x increase, then an 83% pullback. After the third halving, we expected a 10x move from 8,700 to 90,000, but macroeconomic headwinds capped gains at 8x to $64,000, followed by a 77% pullback. Looking forward, a 3x from 2020's 4 halving at 64,000 projects Bitcoin to land around $193,000. Under bad macro conditions, it could land around $150,000 to $160,000. Under stronger macro conditions, we might see a 20% upside to something like $200,000 or $240,000. The idea of a super cycle comes from commodities markets, where it's well established that there have been at least three major super cycles. A super cycle typically lasts more than five years and marks a period of fundamental narrative change that drives outsized profitability. For example, in 1971, the US left the gold standard. Americans were allowed to own gold again after a ban since the 1930s. New demand drove prices up, creating skepticism towards the dollar. Hedge funds quadrupled capital within a decade. In the 1990s commodities supercycle in China, China's industrial boom drove demand for nickel, copper, metals, coal, and other resources. Today, many argue we're entering a new super cycle driven by US dollar instability and unsustainable debt. Bitcoin's fixed supply and halving cycles tighten scarcity further with each cycle. Supply drops from 7,200 per day to under 100 per day in just over two decades, while adoption rises from 3% today towards eventual majority usage. So what does all this mean? In essence, Bitcoin is in the midst of a perfect storm. It combines a mathematically predictable decreasing supply with a rapidly accelerating adoption and demand. This powerful combination is the basis of the Bitcoin supercycle. Humanity has never experienced a perfectly scarce, hyperliquid, portable, verifiable, near perfect money like Bitcoin before. These dynamics have the potential to drive a multi decade period of outsized growth and volatility, unlike anything we've ever seen before in markets. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.